Good afternoon and welcome to worship here at the Meaden. Whether you're viewing online or here in person, you are more than welcome. Well, just a reminder that next week we have a morning service led by Steve Cray and no afternoon service. Okay. We have our midweek Zoom worship on Wednesday morning. On Thursday morning we have our Zoom prayer meeting. Thursday afternoon our length group and home group meet together. Much for you to join in with and to pray for this week, please. Let's begin our time of worship in prayer. Let us pray. O oh, loving God, breathe your Holy Spirit upon each of us as we pray, upon each of us as we gather before you in worship today. May your touch upon us be gentle, comforting and anointing. And may we respond and yield to your touch. We pray in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 And as always, as we begin our worship, we join in with the ever ongoing worship around God's heavenly throne. So we're going to sing two songs together. Come Now is the Time to Worship, which is number 24. And then we're going to have a go at that new one again, number 37, You're Calling Us. And we'll sing these both together. So please stand, please sit, however you feel led. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. It's great to be back. And I'd like to thank you all for your prayers. They've really, really helped and my recovery's been so much quicker. Thank you. Prayers of adoration and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can come together freely to give you our praise and worship this afternoon. Lord, we adore you. We love you with our minds, our hearts and our souls. Please help us to love you more day by day. Amen. A prayer of thanksgiving from the Methodist Prayer Handbook. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of life in all its diversity and beauty. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, we praise you that you come to find the lost, to free the oppressed, to heal the sick and to convert the self-centred. Holy Spirit, we rejoice that you breathe in the life of the world and are poured out into our hearts. As we live in the Spirit, may we also walk in the Spirit. Grant us faith and courage to deny ourselves, take up the cross and follow Jesus, becoming pilgrims of justice and peace in our time. For the blessing of your people, the sustaining of the earth and the glory of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer of confession, which is adapted from the Methodist Prayer Handbook. O Lord our God, forgive us when we do not love you wholeheartedly, allowing other desires to get in the way. When we do not love you with our whole being, becoming distracted by petty concerns. When we do not love you completely, failing to understand the immensity of your divine nature. Forgive us when we do not love others as much as we love ourselves. When this is just too difficult, or inconvenient, or costly. Thank you for reminding us that you love us unconditionally. So that empowered by your Holy Spirit we may share your love with others. Amen. Gracious Lord, revive our souls and renew our hearts as we receive your forgiveness now. Amen. And now let us sing one of my favourite hymns, number 331, King of Kings.
reading is taken from Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 to 7. Water from the rock. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, travelling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarrelled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water. And they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? To make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you at the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel and he called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarrelled and because they tested the Lord saying is the Lord among us or not thanks be to God for the reading of his word Amen Thank you, Anne. It's lovely to have you back amongst us and being able to assist in worship leading. Thank you so much. I just love those Israelites. They're so real, aren't they? We hear of them grumbling and complaining. The community that had been in slavery in Egypt and had cried out to God for years and years, God, why have you forgotten us? A community, though, whose cries were heard by God and a community who were saved and rescued by God through Moses' leadership. But well, all along their journey, they complained and God responded. They cheered up and then they complained. And then they, well, God responded. They cheered up, they complained and it all began again. That's why it sounds so real to me. And Moses' blessing was caught up in the middle. Sometimes he too complained to God. And sometimes, like here, he complained back to those Israelites. Why blame him, he said. Why quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? And then he complained to God himself. And I just love this phrase. What shall I do with these people? Do you know, it's difficult to be in leadership. Whatever that leadership may look like and may be, you want to serve your community as best you can, gaining all the wisdom and discernment you can to lead in the right direction. It's not always easy, but it's joyful and rewarding. But sometimes, no matter which way you lead, you face criticism. Just look at the world leaders at the moment. With the crisis of the coronavirus over now, Some leaders are still being criticised for what they did or what they didn't do. What about the leadership in relation to the Ukraine with the Russian attack? What about the leadership in relation to the migrants fleeing their country? What would you do if you were in government? What would you do if you were a leader that could make a difference? But back to those lovely Israelites. 
They were grumbling because they had no water. They were thirsty. Moses was their leader, appointed by God, so he was the one to sort this problem. And Moses took the problem directly to God. And God told him what to do. That sounds so easy in itself. If we have a problem, we take it to God. God tells us what to do. Sorted. But we know the Israelites weren't always in a good relationship with God. But still, God loved them. However, Moses, I would say, was in a closer relationship with God. I mean... Moses' face used to glow when he had been in the presence of God. He told Moses to go ahead of the people with some elders and his staff, and he was to strike the rock at Horeb. And when he did, then water would gush out of the rock. And it sure did. The impossible happened. Water from a rock. Surely that's impossible. The people were able to drink and quench their thirst, ready to continue on their journey once more, refreshed and energised, not just through water, but also by the knowledge that God was with them and was still providing for them. I would like to think it was because of his relationship with God that Moses was able to intercede for this community. That was part of his leadership role. And it was because of his relationship with God that he was able to hear God's voice so clearly. It was because of his relationship with God that God did the miraculous through a simple rock. I wonder if you were to think of a rock as being something that is in your life right now, something immovable, something maybe a difficult challenge, an unanswered prayer perhaps, a health concern, a financial concern, a family concern. What area of your life do you most need God to provide a miracle for you today? We often use stones in worship to help us. There's something tangible when we hold and we can relate to them. So I had brought some stones, not big heavy rocks, because I couldn't fit everything in my basket. But I brought us some some stones, some pebbles, and I invite you to take a pebble if you would like to, and to hold it. And as you hold it, to try and press against it. What's your finger's reaction? What's the stone's reaction as you try and press it? As you press into the stone with your fingers, feel the hardness of the stone. The way it doesn't move under your finger, under your touch. What isn't budging in your life right now that only God can move, God can sort. As we listen to our next song, I invite you to continue to press into that stone, to think about what's going on in your life right now. In a sense, to cry out to God and ask for that miracle. Let's listen to Do It Again. Thank you. 
I thought by now they fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never Loving God, we hold in our hands a simple stone. We hold in our hands that thing in our lives that isn't budging, that we need your miracle to work within. Perhaps it's in somebody else's life that we are praying for. Lord, we know that you can do the impossible. And we believe you can do it again. So we 
continue to be patient with expectancy, with faith and hope. Amen. Amen. Paul now is going to bring us our Gospel reading. It's a longish reading, but I invite you to listen to it as though you've not listened to it before, you've not heard it before. And imagine yourself at that well alongside the woman and Jesus. Thanks, Paul. John chapter 4, verse 5 to 30, and then 39 to 42. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well, about noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time, because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, uh, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you, and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this uh, living water? And besides, do you think you are greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Uh, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. Uh, I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will be no longer no where it will be no longer matter whether you worship the Father on the mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. 
The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. Where he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, What do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Verse 39 Many Samaritans believe. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days. Two days long. Long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Saviour of the world. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your scriptures. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul. We talked about stones and now we're going to think about the water. We've talked about Jesus knowing the hard bits, the challenging bits in our lives at this moment. And now we come, just as we are, to the well to meet with Jesus. And Leslie is going to share with us a reflection that Reverend Pam Webster has written. You remember Pam when she was in our circuit and she's given us um, her permission to use um, this reflection and also she wanted you to know that she sends her love and as we listen to this reflection Leslie will then introduce a song for us to listen to afterwards thanks Leslie The Woman at the Well You do know who I am, don't you? What am I? Am I not your kind, your kin? You should have nothing to do with me. I bring life, thirst quenching water, refreshment for the weary, for you, even you, who think so little of yourself. How can you give me what I need? You have nothing with which to help me. What I offer is not temporary, short-lived, just for today. What I offer to you is for life, your life. It's not just a drink, but a source of life, flowing in and through you. Not a puddle, or a sip, but a spring, eternal, ever-quenching. You have been waiting, seeking, looking for answers. Yearning for fulfilment, I am the one, here with you. Offering all you need. Come, come and meet him, the one who has met my thirst, who knows me inside out, yet still takes time for me, offers me refreshment. 
not just for today, but for tomorrow and forever. He's the one. Come and see. Come and know for yourself. Come, those who are thirsty, parched, dried out. Come, know my love and know life and refreshment from within, from me. I know what you need and I offer it now. Come, drink, be refreshed. Lord, I come thirsty in need of refreshment. I think I am not good enough for your help. But you know me, accept me, and offer to quench my thirst. May I take all that you offer, fresh, clean water, running through my life, filling me with you. And now we're going to listen to a reflective song, Let Your Living Water Flow Over My Soul. It's time for you to sit and listen and reflect. Let us pray. Our dear Lord God, in Jesus you came in bodily form, bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh, with us as one, whether in delirious laughter or agonising pain. Thank you that you came and walked among us, wept with us, washed feet among us. Your love so strong 
so sincere, changed the way we thought. You showed us the living proof of your work and will. Lord God, Jesus held and touched the suffering. Listen to those who were ignored. Gave hope to the depressed. And bandaged all the broken with love and helped them. Your power to heal is still with us. We call on your help as we bring to you today. Sandra and Dennis, envelop them in your healing arms and let them feel your presence. For Neil, give him hope, Lord. Let him see a bright future ahead and support him. Michelle and Philip, we know you are with them and we ask for healing, love and strength. Anne, for your continued love and support as her body heals and she gains her mobility again. Sue, we know you share our love and care and concern. Please let her feel you around her every day. We ask that you are with the wider community, country and world. All those whose minds are troubled with thoughts that wound them. Those whose hearts are broken and who feel that the light has gone from their lives. Anyone who in any way is suffering. Our dear Lord, we ask that you please place your hands where our prayers lead you. Lord God, in Jesus your body was broken by the powerful and cowardly. Those who stood in judgment knew your silence as those who criticised you had heard your voice. In silence and in words, Lord, let the world know that there are those whose words and silence led to cruelty, dismissal, hatred, persecution, injustice, even if they had the power to change lives. Lord, please, we ask, liberate your people. We ask now, Lord, please make us like you. Open our souls to the light, that your purpose may illuminate us to bring beauty, truth, and meaning to our lives in your world. Through our lives and by your prayers, let your kingdom come in joy, peace and generosity in the large and small, the ordinary and the special, and let it all be to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we join together now as we say the Lord's Amen. Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those trespasses. I'm forgive our trespasses, sorry, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now we're going to have our final hymn, which is hymn number 473, Moses, I Know You're the Man. And we continue to be that moving, travelling, wandering race, the people of God. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that has been poured into our hearts today, may that be poured out into others, those you meet, those you live with, your homes, your family, your friends, your community. May God bless you and those you love and those you were called to love in abundance. Amen. Amen.